Hi, my name is Ada Laposada, and I'm currently uh, having the position of manager for cybersecurity policies uh, in PwC Serbia. Uh, I'm also uh, leading the company's uh, practice, cybersecurity governance related practice for Southeast Europe, and I'm also a member of the team uh, for Central and Eastern Europe who is dealing also with uh, cybersecurity governance. And what is also what may be interesting for me and is also interesting for this topic is I'm not a techie, so I'm a political scientist. And to be quite uh, honest with you, uh, until maybe a couple of years ago, uh, I, I used this as an excuse, basically, when discussing uh, with, uh, with, with, with peers. Uh, so I tried to tell them, OK, you know, I'm dealing with cybersecurity, but I'm not a techie. Nowadays, uh, things have changed profoundly, uh, and it is definitely not an excuse more. And uh, this actually uh, showcases the extent to cybersecurity has changed and basically our perception of cybersecurity uh, has profoundly changed. So cybersecurity, as I already said, I mean, cybersecurity nowadays is not anymore just the topic that our IT guys, the guys that finish uh, computer engineering, uh, deal with. Uh, cybersecurity is an overarching topic and thus entails and needs to entail an overarching approach. So somebody with my portfolio, a political scientist, uh, also needs to be there, but we also need a lot of sociologists now. We need people who are behavioral psychologists. Uh, we also need people from HR that because uh, the way that HR is uh, tackling or for any company is actually tackling awareness raising uh, on cybersecurity is of paramount importance. So cybersecurity is a topic for all of us. It's a topic for the whole society. And thus, our company also tries to entail a whole of society approach uh, when dealing with it. So up to now, our company uh, in, in Europe, but also in Central and Eastern Europe that I'm dealing uh, with mostly, uh, has developed a very strong uh, capabilities and strong IT teams, uh, teams that are capable of uh, assessing cyber maturity uh, components uh, of any company or working with uh, different uh, nation states uh, Europe-wide. Uh, but we also needed this uh, complementary uh, side approach of those who are capable of dealing with procedures and who are also capable of you know tackling this approach from a from a policy perspective and now with a team that is that exists here here in Serbia and that is uh, that has also an, uh, a strong uh, components uh, in Poland we are also capable of uh, making really uh, teams which are complemented with with the deep policy knowledge uh, on the topic and there therefore there are several ways we are now dealing with cybersecurity, uh, depending on what we want actually to, to tackle. So on one hand, uh, we're dealing with cybersecurity on a Europe or European Union level. Uh, also, another very important strand for us uh, are nationwide or national policies. Uh, we also work with different companies. And finally, we want to have uh, a citizen level or, or individual level approach. Uh, we try to be the company that helps also the European Union uh, completely reshape its cybersecurity strategic uh, approach and, and, and policy level approach. Um, as you will probably, many who deal with the topic know very well, uh, European Union has proclaimed 2020-2030 uh, the digital decade. Uh, it also means that uh, if we want to have all our citizens, all, all European Union citizens digital savvy, we need to explain that th there is a cybersecurity side uh, of the coin and we need to tackle that coin. And to that end, uh, European Union has really uh, completely reshaped its cybersecurity approach. Cybersecurity is one of the most important uh, topics, but it's not only a security topic, uh, security topic Topic. It also has its own um, strand of functioning. So we have a European cybersecurity strategy. There is now the Network and Information Systems Directive, which has already been implemented in, in uh, policies uh, of uh, and in laws, actually, of all European Union countries. But also 
uh, countries uh, who are aspirants or candidate artists are, are trying to reshape their laws according to NIS directive and, and, and different, I mean, many, a plethora of different other uh, strategies. And um, PwC is a partner in uh, or tries to be partner in most of these endeavors. And uh, this is something that will definitely uh, continue in future. At the national level, uh, be it uh, the, the European Union countries or, for instance, in the Western Balkans or Southeast Europe, the candidate countries, uh, we're trying to help the countries understand better, on the one hand, how the EU has reshaped and how the EU uh, uh, intends to function in the next 10 or 15 years in terms of cybersecurity, but also to help countries develop and reshape their legal strategic uh, frameworks, how they need to communicate better uh, with, uh, with different uh, companies of the private sector, be, there, be they the, the, the large-scale companies or micro, my, micro mini, and, and, and mid-level enterprises, uh, and also to uh, help them uh, do the capacity building of, of uh, different new bodies uh, that, are, that have been created, uh, especially for dealing with cybersecurity. That entails uh, computer emer emergency response teams, or the so-called CERTs, which are like the firefighters uh, in cybersecurity, so the first level of answering the incidents, but it also entails working a lot with policy level uh, people, with those that are there to, uh, to shape national policies. On the other hand, we also try to have them, to help, I mean, the countries have them aligned, because it's not also in anybody's interest to have one country working rather well, whereas the other then lagging a lot behind. This especially goes for, for the Western Balkans. Uh, why all this? Because cybersecurity is not a topic that recognizes any boundaries. Coming then to the to the private sector level, uh, and this is something where, where PwC has a lot of experience working with <clears throat> uh, in, in many uh, years before, um, we intend to work and we do work uh, in, in whole Europe. Uh, we work with different uh, level companies, of companies of different sizes actually. So on the one hand, it is natural for us to work with the large scale companies, though that those that completely need to reshape their cybersecurity posture uh, in order not to be not to appear on the front line of uh, newspapers uh, because they have been hacked or because uh, the data uh, that they hold have been have been leaked but also we intend to work a lot with small and medium enterprises and there is a reason for this I mean whereas in many other uh, uh, many other fields, uh, it is important to work with large-scale large companies. Here, uh, small and medium enterprises are also the key. I mean, why? This is because uh, many of the attacks, attackers are, I mean, they're humans and they're, uh, they're becoming, they're trying to find the ways to uh, infiltrate and to attack uh, different, uh, different enterprises. And they used to do it in maybe the last couple of years. This is the trend that we see. They try to do it through supply, the so-called supply chain management. This means that they're attacking small companies, they're attacking medium-sized companies who are working then with large enterprises or working with ministries of defense or working with the government. And through them, then try to infiltrate uh, the big ones, you know, the crown jewels that they're actually aiming for. So it is of paramount importance also to raise awareness of those that maybe do not have so much um, have not seen cybersecurity as that important or don't see that they should be the targets and hence uh, are not investing as much as, as they should in this field. And finally, something that I'm personally very keen on uh, working, uh, working, working on is actually uh, working with, uh, with individuals, working with citizens. And why is that? I mean, we all have our uh, different roles in the society uh, and through our, throughout our life cycle, we change those roles. And for each and every of these roles, cybersecurity is important in a very peculiar way. Uh, so for instance, uh, children are very prone to being attacked because they use social networks a lot. Uh, people who work uh, or employees of any, any company are 
also prone to being attacked because they are the weakest link or seen as the weakest link and those uh, through, through, through which uh, attackers can, uh, can attack the company and find what they need and do what they want. Finally, there are many vulnerable, other vulnerable groups uh, that are also, uh, I mean, they need to, 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 to have in mind uh, the importance of cybersecurity. Our senior citizens, for instance, are lately, as of lately, as of maybe in the last five years, being very much attacked. In some, some countries, you know, the, the use of wishing, the use of uh, calling them and explaining that, for instance, uh, their loved ones are, something has happened to their loved ones and they need to go uh, on the street and to bring money and then, then being attacked. These are things that are, that are happening. Um, revenge porn is something that is also very important and nowadays has a lot of uh, uh, media uh, coverage. So we all can be attacked, we all be can be subjected to some cyber attack and hence in order not to, I mean, to avoid something like this to happen, we need to become cyber savvy. Now this is the, I mean, this is important for, for, it's important for countries to help their own citizens to build and raise uh, awareness, to, to work on awareness raising campaigns, but it doesn't go like that. It's never only the state that can uh, work on this. Uh, it needs to be a multi-stakeholder approach. It needs to be endeavor of each and every one, one of us. So in this, countries and private sector and academia and civil society organizations, they all need to work together in order for our society to become more cyber savvy. Another important thing, and the thing that PwC uh, will try to tackle in the following years, is uh, the huge demand that uh, for cybersecurity-related profiles. Uh, some surveys, uh, PwC is among them, uh, say that uh, in 2021 we already have uh, a lack of 1.8 million uh, people who will deal with cybersecurity, and this doesn't entail only those that are dealing with IT, as we as we call it, but also political scientists, psychologists, and many other. Uh, this means that we need to invest in education. And again, this is not only and cannot be only the endeavor of, of nation states. It needs to take the, the different multi-stakeholder approach. So we need, uh, specifically on BA and MA levels, uh, we need specific cybersecurity uh, curriculums, specific cybersecurity studies, uh, multidisciplinary studies that would entail also uh, different aspects of cybersecurity and we need to have those people, otherwise uh, we're definitely going to, uh, to have an issue and to have problems. And finally, as I already said at one point, uh, the EU has proclaimed uh, this decade as a digital decade. De decade. In my view, uh, and pardon me because cybersecurity is my topic, but this is a cybersecurity decade, definitely. Um, and there are different ways, different ways how I see future. I mean, uh, as many problems, cybersecurity problems as we solve, many new will arise, and this is because both people who are dealing with cybersecurity and cyber attackers are humans. So, you know, whatever issue the human, one human solves, there is another issue that, that another human uh, will create again. So we need to understand that cybersecurity is here and will remain here. And uh, we're here also to tackle those issues and we can do it all together and we need to do it all together. And PwC is here to help, definitely. <laughs>